right, let's look at number 11. Sandy's new car cost her $24,000. She was told that this make and model depreciates exponentially at a rate of 9.5% per year. How much would the car be worth at 63 months? So looking at this, first thing we need to remember the equation is y equals a times 1 minus r to the x power, where a is the new car value, r rate as a decimal, x is time in years, and y is value at x years. So let's figure out what we know and solve for what we don't know. So we're going to put a, r, x, y. Well, the new car cost was 24000 It depreciates exponentially at 9.5%, which is a decimal is 0 0.095. And the time period is 63 months. So I need to divide that by 12 to get that to years, because remember, x is time in years. And I'm looking at 5.25 is my time period. So now plugging that in, I get y equals 24,000 times 1 minus 0 0.095 all to the 5.25 power. And when I plug all of that in, it's really just very simple into the calculator. It's y equals, I would put in the 24,000, open parenthesis, 1 minus 0 0.095, close parenthesis. Remember here you're going to put your caret to indicate that it's to the power of, and then 5.25, and you're going to get an answer of $14,210.73. So that one went pretty easy. All right, Rick purchased a four-year-old car for $13,700. Again, we're looking at an exponential equation. So A equals, R equals, X equals, and Y equals. So the car at four years was $13,700. And when it was new, it sold for $28,645. <clears throat> and it wants to know what is the depreciation rate to the nearest hundredth of a percent. So I'm going to go out two decimal points when it asks for that. Plug it into my formula. I have 13,700 equals 28,645, all times 1 minus r to the fourth power. My first step is to divide both sides by the 28,645, because I'm working to get r by itself. And when I do that, I end up with a nice little long number of 0.47826848587. And that equals 1 minus r in parentheses to the fourth power. Remember next that to get rid of a root or a power here, I'm going to multiply it by its reciprocal. And if I do something to one side, I have to do it to the other. So I'm going to take both sides to the one-fourth. And what I end up with when I do it to the first left side is I get 0.8316 equals 1 minus r. Because remember, the four and the fourth cancel each other out. Parentheses drop. My next step is to go ahead and add r to both sides. So now I get r plus 0.8316 equals 1. I'm now going to subtract the 0.8316 to both sides. And I get that r equals 0.1684. But remember, it's asking as a percent. So the next thing I'm going to do is move that decimal over 2 to the right. And it's 16.84. It said to the nearest hundredth of a percent, so I do need both the 8 and the 4. And there's my answer. 
All right, a car that Deborah bought is four years old, so let's start again. A equals R equals X equals Y equals. So it was four years old. She paid $9,600. This make and model depreciates exponentially at a rate of 0 0.075. What was the original price? So plugging it in, I get 9,600 equals A times 1 minus 0 0.075 all to the fourth power. Calculating that through, I end up with A equals $13,113.07. So how I would do that, just real quick, I'm going to parentheses 1 minus 0 0.075, close parentheses, caret 4, I'll get my answer, and then whatever I get, which I'm sorry I didn't write down so I don't have it readily available, but whatever I get there, it's then 9,600 equals whatever that value is to the A power, and let me calculate that real quick so that we have that. All right, so calculating it out, it is a crazy long number. One thing I would recommend here and caution you on is I know these numbers are long, but you do not want to shorten them or reduce them or round them. So it's 0 0.732094140 a. Then you're going to divide both sides by the 0 0.732094146, and that's how we get our final answer here of $13,113.07. All right, next one. Last one where we're working with our exponential depreciation. I know that you're excited about that. So, new car sells for 29700 Exponentially depreciates at a rate of 6.35, which is 0 .0635 in our problem. And it depreciates to $24,300. And X is our unknown. So plugging in our values here, I've got $24,300 equals $29,700 all to the 1 minus 0 0.0635 and then to the X power. So the first thing that we're going to do here is divide both sides by the $29,700. And I end up with... 0.81818 repeating equals, and I've got 1 minus 0 0.0635 to the x power. So in order to do this, I'm going to take the natural log of the 0.81818, and I'm going to take the natural log of the 1 minus 0 0.0635. Okay, so when I take the natural log of the one side, I get a negative 0.2006729177 equals, and on the right-hand side, I get a negative 0 0.0656057571x. I'm going to divide both sides by this negative 0 0.0656057571. So I'll just kind of say the same thing over here. And I get x equals 3.0587. But it asks us to round to the nearest tenth. So the 5 is going to round that up, and it's going to be in 3.1 years. All right, those are the, probably the toughest ones on there, so let's move on to some easier ones. Number 14, Ray is planning a 425-mile trip to a math teacher's conference in Vegas. He's going to average 60 miles per hour. At that speed, how many hours will it take? Well, 425 divided by 60 is going to give us 7.08 miles or hours, and it says round to the nearest hour. So the answer is seven hours. 
16, Tara has a hybrid car, 43 miles to the gallon, 13 gallon tank. How far can she travel? Well, 13 times 43, I end up with 559 miles. Gail's car gets approximately 21 miles per gallon. She's planning an 1,800 mile trip. About how many gallons of gas should she plan to buy? So if I take the 1,800 and divide it by the 21 miles per hour, or per gallon, I get 85.7 gallons is what she needs to buy. At an average price of 375, how much is that gonna cost? So I'm gonna take the 85.7, multiply it by that 375, and it's gonna cost about $321 and 43 cents for her to make this trip. Evan and Chase are driving from Miami, Florida to New York City, a distance of 1,292 miles. How much time is saved by doing the trip at 75, 70 miles an hour versus 60? So two equations, 1,292 divided by 70, 1,292 divided by 60. When I divide by 70, I end up with 18.457. When I divide by the 60, I get 21.5. When I subtract it, I'm looking at 21.5 minus 18.5 in essence. So it's a difference of three hours. How many miles does a car drive traveling a miles an hour for five hours? And the answer is 5A. If it was three hours, it'd be 3A. If it's seven hours, it'd be 7A. How many feet does a car traveling 40 miles an hour cover in one hour, one minute, and one second? Remembering that 5,280 feet in a, um, in a mile. So for one hour, I would take the 40 miles per hour times 5,280 for feet. And in one hour, it would be 211,200. In one minute, I'm gonna take the 21,200 and divide it by 60, because there's 60 minutes in an hour. So then the minutes would be 3520. And then finally second, I take the 3520, divide it by 60, because there's 60 seconds in a minute, and I get 58.67. All right, Sybil is driving on the highway at a legal speed limit of 55. She sees the police 280 feet ahead. She must come to a complete stop. Can she do it safely? So remember it's speed plus speed squared divided by 20. So I'm looking at she was going 55 miles an hour plus 55 squared divided by 20. And we find that she will be at 206.25, which means she will, she will, yes, she will have enough room to stop. Drake is traveling 65 miles an hour on a road with a drag factor of 0.7, 90% efficiency to the nearest foot. Um, what's the average length of the skid marks? So we're looking at 65 equals the square root of 30 times D times 0.7 times 0.9. When I multiply those together, I end up with 65 equals 18.9 D divide both sides by 18.9 and I get D equals and I'm sorry got to go ahead and square that first I'm getting ahead of myself got to try and get rid of the square root so I square both sides which I squared here so I get 4225 equals the 18.9 D so I took it out of the square root and now I divide both sides by the 18.9 and I get D equals an average skid mark of 223.5.